So God made a farmer, and we're special, right? Here's a little bit about myself. I think everyone can read what it is, but I'm going to tell you something a little more deeply about me. Uh, I was a wrestling coach for 18 years, did youth, junior high, high school, youth, all over the place. And I was always amazed how these kids in junior high would just be dynamite wrestlers. And all of a sudden, they'd come to the end of their season, and they'd say, well, I'm not going to wrestle in high school. I said, what the heck are you guys? You, you, you could be top caliber in high school. And they'd say, no, I don't like the coach, the head coach. I'm not going to do it. And I thought, are you crazy? You're going to let one guy stand in front of you and stop you? And then I started realizing, well, hang on. 20 years ago, I started doing cover crops, and I had agronomists tell me, you can't do that. And I thought, well, hang on. They're my coach. I'm letting them stop me. So then I started doing things. And then I started really thinking even more deeply about it and realized that, hang on, maybe that one person stopping is myself. So for everyone out here right now, make sure that if you don't go on your journey and you stop because you can't do it, lots of times it's yourself that's stopping you. So don't let someone else stop you and don't let yourself stop yourself. All right. As you can see, I got a beautiful family. That some of them are here. Uh, that last thing, drainage. We used to do drainage because my dad loved to see me work. He stuck me in the ground about four feet and said, "Start digging, hook up tiles." And it was great because I started realizing that, look at the soil. It's crappy. It's dead. It's stale. And I realized that that's not what I want. I want to take my boy Brandon fishing. 1,000 acres. I'm going to go dig some worms up. I couldn't find a single worm. That's disheartening. Nowadays, it's different. So soil health. You guys can read that, but you know what? I'm a farmer. I've walked that soil a million times. I use my senses. I see the soil. Last night, I was talking to someone at a table, uh, Antonio, I think. And you're telling, you said, oh, I got soil samples that proves this. But how did it really look to you? Use your senses. Look. I can see it. I can touch it. I can feel the difference. I can hear it. When I go out there and I pull roots out of the ground, you hear that Velcro just rip. That's soil health. You got something going on there. I can also taste. And I don't go all grabbing dirt and stick it in my mouth. Uh, but I do go out in the middle of the winter time when it's three degrees out and I dig under the snow and I pull up some cover crop or whatever's out there. I put my mouth and it's like gum. It's pliable. It's good tasting. It's sweet. Hey, there's soil health. And guess what? That's going to go to my cattle too because they're all grazing. So use all your senses. Now, soil health. This is last time it was really healthy soil. There were 60 to 100 million buffalo roaming the earth, and it was fantastic. Or that ro roaming uh, Northern America. And it was healthy. Nowadays, you got people saying, oh, you shouldn't have livestock. BS. We got about the same amount of livestock, but this is how it should be. But I do have my own little slice of heaven. That's what I do. I put cattle out on there. Now, as a farmer, I get to deal with environmental storms. And guess what? I am usually the one that gets blamed for it, too. Right? All you farmers down here in California, you're using all the water. It's your guys' fault. All right? We've had the wettest years in the last two decades. We've had the warmest years. Large rain events, still kind of getting the same amount of moisture, but all in one shot. I've had seven-inch rains. I just, thank goodness I haven't had any 13, 15 inch rains because I don't know how I would deal with that up in Minnesota. Down here, I don't know what's the average rainfall. Big rainfall. Two, three inches. Two, three inches, okay. So you guys want to save it. Still the same principles. All right, more pollution than ever. But as a farmer, guess what? I also have economic storms. So I have to deal with, oh yeah crappy prices. We're losing farms at an alarming rate. That's not the way it should be if we're doing a good job. 
Remember we talked about the empires, the Roman empires earlier? They built these in the castles. They built the castles. They grew the food. They wrecked their soil. Guess what? They had to move. Beautiful castle left because there's nothing to sustain it. Agriculture is the backbone of the economy. I totally believe that. Now, this field is one of mine. It flooded out, and thank goodness I split applied nitrogen, so I didn't put on that last 100 pounds of nitrogen. I didn't lose much. But really, should I be farming anyways? Probably not. Revenue. Look at that. Boy, we're spending a ton of money in egg. Look at our income. Not much better. That's not the way it should be, guys. We're farming for profit, but we're also farming for the environment. We're farming for the future. That does not work. Now, the traditional way of farming is like checkers. I grew up playing checkers. And then guess what? I got a little smarter, and I started playing chess. If you want to start playing chess and start doing cover crops, no-till, livestock integration, maybe organics, niche markets, you have to start thinking and get out of the idea of the one basic move. You need to start thinking two, three, four moves ahead and two, three, four years behind. Moves ahead, years behind, it's all the same thing. So when you come to farming, what I do today or tomorrow, I think what happened three years ago. If I want to ramp that soil up and it never got before, I'm going to put a mega blend out there. If I've already got a great blend out there three years ago and I can sustain that soil life and I got the microbe colonies out there, I go a different route. But I always use my head. Now, I bet you that's the way a lot of guys farm. That I did for, let's see, 30, 30, oh, 25 years, that's how I farmed. And every time I got done tilling the field, I thought it was beautiful. Beautiful black dirt, just did a beautiful job. And then, of course, someone would drive kitty corn across the field and just drive me crazy. But you know what? Now I plant covers and I don't touch the soil. Green, green is the right color. Black is not. And, of course, here's my neighbor's field. He still hasn't learned. Now, everyone has seen this, Ray Archer let us slide. Soil's naked, hungry, thirsty, and running fever. You're damn right. But you know what? It's also alone. It's also homeless. It's also drug addicted. That's not the way to raise family or fields. That's why I farm like this. I plant green. I do everything I do everything I can to leave a living root in there. There's my roots. That's soil health. That's how I farm. I don't need a big tool, tillage tool. I don't need metal in the soil. I use plants. In the end, I'm capturing more carbon, more water, because really that's what it's about. Right? I need to grab all that energy I can. I also need to catch all that water, because believe it or not, water is in short supply. It's hard to imagine right here in California, looking at all that water out there, and we're in dire need of water. But it's really healthy water. We have tons of polluted water, but what good is that? Now, what is my goal of soil health? This is just a little breakdown, but I do my part to protect and regenerate the environment. Because if I don't take care of that, I don't have anything. And guess what? Future generations don't have it. That's probably my number one goal, is to make sure that I sustain it for everyone after me. Because we're just borrowing the land. We don't own it. We're just sort of caretakers. Now, economically, I want to reduce my inputs. Remember I showed the slide of revenue and income? That's not very good, but if I can control my inputs, because I can't control my prices too good, but I have realized I can, because the more I do good things, the more good things happen, and the more niche markets open up. Technology, I love technology, but for me, the best thing it's done is it's opened up markets. 
It's opened up people to want my product. Now, improve the products that I'm producing. That's why, that's why I do it. Healthy family, healthy communities. With healthier soil, you get crops, livestock environment, wildlife, communities. You can drive all around the United States and you can see abandoned towns, abandoned castles in France. If you don't take care of the soil, everything dies. And what good are we if we don't have communities? Now, I tone this down a lot. Because originally it wasn't people. It was a little more of a drastic word or words. But the thing about smart people is they sound like crazy people to dumb people. That pretty much explains most of my neighbors. Because they think I'm crazy. But really, I'm working with Mother Nature. And I've realized that, you know what, at the coffee shop, I might be the weirdo. But in the community coffee shop in town that really matters, because that's 24,000 of the people in the town, they all love what I'm doing. Farmers are scared. You know, we don't know how, which way to go. Do I follow my dad, my grandpa, what they did for all these years? Or do I break off and go this separate route that's scary? It's, you know, it's threatening. It's threatening to my way of life because if I fail, guess what? I'm not a college professor that gets to just go home or a school teacher. I have to live with what I, what I get for results. Now, I was lucky, me and my wife were lucky to go down to Oaxaca, Mexico on a LSP, it's Land Stewardship Project for Witness for Peace. And I thought, all right, I'm going to go down there to Oaxaca, Mexico, and I'm going to teach these people about cover crops. You know, I know it all. Of course, even though, you know, my wife says I'm an expert and idiot in the same day, <laughs> same field, same minute. But it's true. I can have failures and I can have successes. Expert idiot. But I went down there and I learned really fast, you know, shut up. Watch what's around you. You know, I have a, a book that tomorrow I'll have my presentation slide, or in my presentation I'll hand out for people to look at, but one of the best sayings on there is, you know, look, don't think. Don't, because we all are really good at thinking that we know it all, but just look and absorb what you see. So I did that. And this right here, this top, uh, right up there, that's uh, the top of Yoko Yuko Mountain. And when we drove out there, it was hotter than heck. I'm from Minnesota. My wife's from Texas. We're in Mexico. I'm hot. But we drove up this mountain. And I thought, wow, look how gorgeous. All those white rocks. Just beautiful. And then we got into here where it was like a little oasis. It was cool. It was comfortable. There was livestock running all around. It was, it was just like at home. But guess what? It was, you know, 95 degrees out. So right here, the story behind this is this guy, his dad asked the neighbor, do you want to plant some trees with me? And the one neighbor said, no, I don't want to plant trees. But guess what? This guy did. What a difference. And actually, what he did right there, he planted those tr trees, now he has all his wildlife, chickens, goats, cows, everything in there. He was making his own fertilizer from, uh, it's called Mountain Magic, right? They came down, they had nice diverse trees out there. They went down, dug up the microbes, put them in compost teas, and, and brewed their own fertilizer. They worked with Mother Nature, and that guy pretty much had nothing. He had a ravine that livestock can't graze on, you can't really build a house on, and this guy has a little oasis, a little slice of heaven. All right? End of the story is plant trees, guys. Protect the earth. Now, my dad was a great storyteller. He farmed his whole life, and he traveled. And I thought, wow, you get paid to travel? How cool. And he always told me everybody has a story to tell. But... I was also young, and I, I ignored them. And I wanted to be that big f farmer with the 120-foot boom and the 60-foot digger and run across the field. That's what I was worried about. 
until I started changing the way I looked at things and did things. Now I'm a regenerative guy. He actually, his first time we did a cover crop, and I didn't know it was a cover crop back then, he said, go out and plant this uh, dwarf Essex rapeseed. And I thought, what the hell, Dad? You want me to go do more work when I already got too much to do? What, what is this dumb thing? I listened to my dad. I went out and did it. And it's changed our lives. Now he, he says everybody has a story to tell. So I just hope that tomorrow you come and get the rest of the story. Thank you.